So, you're debuting your album, Where I Belong, in July? Yes, I am. Uh, I'm so excited about this album. Uh, for many years, I, that's all I've been thinking about and dreaming about, and it's finally becoming a reality. I understand you're releasing the album at the annual Judah Music Conference here in Orlando. Yes. What better venue and atmosphere to launch a recording debut than at a conference for musicians? I agree. The timing couldn't be better. Um, Judah is an opportunity for musicians like myself to come together and experience new music. So you were born and raised in Miami, Florida. How did that influence you musically? Well, I think the fact that um, Miami is such a melting pot and there's so many cultures influenced my musical interests in the sense that it made me more open to express myself, uh, you know, over any style of music. I feel like just as home playing Bob Marley as I do, I don't know, James Brown or John Coltrane. Who are some of your guitar heroes? Well, uh, it's a long list, but I'd have to say uh, the top five would be like Jimi Hendrix, uh, Eddie Van Halen, both of which influenced me early on in my, you know, formation as a guitarist. And then, um, like, Stevie Ray Vaughan was a big influence as far as, like, the soulful aspect. And then from, like, the jazz end of it, I would have to say Pat Metheny and Alan Holden would probably round out the top five. You have several notable studio credits, including We Made It for Wyclef Jean. How did that opportunity present itself to you? Actually, uh, I was fortunate enough to be introduced to hip-hop producers, The Runners, and uh, they're based out of Orlando, and now I think they're in Miami, my hometown. And uh, they took a liking to my style, and um, you know, when, you, when you're when you working with producers, you never know which tracks are gonna be selected or placed, and I was lucky enough to be on one that went up on Wyclef's last album. Your playing is also featured on Pastor Clint Brown's last three albums, which have a lot of guitar. Yes, they do. And uh, my experience with him in the studio with uh, his producers, Aaron Pierce and Christian Dentley, actually was the inspiration for me to pursue my own recording career. So Ash, how does the music go from an idea in your head or a sound in your mind to a reality we can share and experience? Well, creativity can strike at any time, and uh, you know, you can be on the road, in the studio, in your hotel room, and you get a great idea. So what I do is I use my laptop as a mobile studio to record uh, that first, you know, inspiration in the moment while it's fresh, and then uh, it takes like countless hours and, you know, participation by a lot of talented people and dedication to the project to get to the final, you know, uh, version of it. Uh, but I find when I'm writing that uh, if I can turn on the volume of my daily life, all the distractions, uh, that's when the music within begins to surface. So you are known for a particular style of guitar playing. This album is a departure from the high energy electric sound you're known for. Why did you decide to do an acoustic album? Well, as I've matured as a musician, I, I felt like the need to explore more of the melodic aspects of my music and as an artist, I have a profound admiration for other improvisers like Miles Davis, B.B. King, and John Mayer, who uh, evoke so much emotion with just a few notes. Um, on this album, I wanted to capture those subtle elements, uh, and the acoustic helped me do just that. As part of Orlando's premier worship team under Pastor Clint Brown, you're being seen by thousands of people every week at Faith World. How do you deal with all the exposure? Well, to be honest with you, it takes a little getting used to at first, uh, and I am contacted all the time uh, via Facebook, YouTube, uh, even MySpace, and Twitter now uh, by people from all over the country, or the world for that matter, and uh, it seems like they all love and respect and follow what we do here. What advice would you give to up-and-coming musicians who see you and aspire to do what you do? Well, first I would say practice. <laughs> Apart from whatever practice you do with your band, you need to have like a personal practice schedule to familiarize yourself with like the styles or the techniques and even the sounds that you want to emulate. Uh, secondly, listen. Listen to the music is the best advice I can give you. Everything you need to know is on the recording. Uh, it's just a matter of being able to dissect and digest all that information. Know your role. Uh, by that I mean, uh, know that you aren't the star of the show, you know, you're just a part of a band. It's not unlike a sports team where you have a position uh, or a role you have to serve. You can't be the quarterback, the coach, and the kicker all at the same time. 
All of the songs on the album were written and arranged by you. How did you come up with the name for the album? Actually, it came from a, a lyric to a song that I composed and collaborated on with my good friend LaRue Howard. Um, I think at some point, everyone asks themselves where they belong. And I feel that I'm finally grasping an understanding of my true purpose. Um, that realization actually set the tone for this album and motivated me to want to share my gift of music with the world. Thank you for the stay.